Oh, there you are, YouTube. Today, you're going to pull out number 24, right? Yeah, you're right. There. Can you grab that one? What's it say? <gasps> it is Bone Tomahawk. Whoa. I, oh, I should have said it on camera. I had a premonition it was going to be Bone Tomahawk, and it is. Look at that. We've never seen this one before. So, not sure what to expect. Is it a true horror film? Or no? It is? You want to put that one in? Put it back? Good job. Way to go. You did it. Awesome. <laughs> Dressed for the occasion, I shaved my beard to accentuate my curly mustache, my handlebar mustache, so that I may emulate the great Kurt Russell in Bone Tomahawk. Um, Bone Tomahawk. You know, in some ways, you're just watching Fargo season two. I'm pretty sure because Patrick Wilson is in this movie. Um, the character Hansi from Fargo season two is in this movie. And I think the Francis Ford Coppola, like, like, uh, what do you call that? Like, parody um, in season two of Fargo. I'm pretty sure that's the actor who's playing him um, is in this movie. So half the cast are Fargo season two people, if I'm right with that third person. Um, but... So that was pretty interesting to see, and I didn't look at the timing the year, but it makes me wonder if that was all like happening at the same time and they just, you know, got work together. Um, wanted to dress appropriately also, Bone Tomahawk being a Western, a Western horror. Um, very much Western though, you don't really get to the horror aspect till later. A lot of times it just seems like it's fully drawing upon horror, or excuse me, Western tropes the entire time, but we do get a little, little, uh, little, little, little onion in it. <laughs> we get a little bit of horror there at the end, I think. But, I don't know, I guess we associate these with cowboys, right? The Old West. So, uh, wore this all day today as well. But yeah, um, I feel like, I mean, I, I think Bone Tomahawk is a good movie. That was good. It reminded me of a few films, The Searchers, very much like The Searchers. Uh, also reminded me a little bit of The Hills Have Eyes, maybe. I'm going to still say yes. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, maybe The Descent, again, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and also, everything I hate about Jurassic Park 3, actually there's a lot of things I hate about Jurassic Park 3, but one thing I don't like about Jurassic Park 3, I feel like this movie takes and sort of um, makes it interesting, makes it something that works, um, makes it something that actually turns this film into a horror film or a um, collision between Western and horror. So, yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to dip into spoilers really quick. At least just this one part here. When I talk about Jurassic Park 3, do you remember when Dr. Grant sort of takes like the um, raptor voice box trachea thing and then he like has a mold of it and um, he starts like blowing into it and it's like... <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember. It's like... Um, and, you know, basically he's talking to the raptors. Well, um, these people that, um, I guess, the protagonists are going up against, I think, have... Here now I'm getting into The Hills Have Eyes and uh, The Descent. I can't tell if it's part of their physiology. I'm going to say it is a part of their physiology because I think that makes this movie into, puts this movie into the horror genre where they have this thing in their throat right here. It looks like a bony object that makes it so they can like do this whistle yell 
and basically um, a character, Patrick Wilson, shoots one of them, digs that bone thing out of their neck, and then uses it to call them so that he can pick them off as they come towards him. So like he takes that out and then starts blowing in it like a whistle, and then um, picks them off whenever, whenever they're near him. And that's how he's able to sort of save the day, rescue his wife who was kidnapped. That's the searcher's part of it. Um, and so yeah, that's very Jurassic Park right there. You know, blowing through that whistle to capture attention of the antagonist, essentially. Um, the thing about the physiology, I do, it, it, it seems like it could be part of their physiology or it could be body modification that they modified their um, bodies, their throats, their voice box, trachea, whatever, so that they would make this sound. It's, if that's the case, I feel like we're still looking at a Western, mostly. But if it's part of the physiology, then I think we're looking at a horror film, because then it's a monster that we're looking at. It's not just a person who, you know, gave himself a piercing or something like that, or did body modification. So I think they leave it open, but I've seen so many people call this a horror movie. My friends have called it a horror movie. Well, you know, that it, it could be placed in the horror genre. And I, for me, I really think it only can if that is part of the antagonist's physiology. Otherwise, I think it's just a group of people who have um, done body modification. Sure, it could be, you know, like science fiction body modification. It's probably not something that could actually be done. So, I don't know, maybe I guess that still tips it into horror a little bit, but um, to me, I think there needs to be something a little out more out of this world uh, to dip it into the horror genre, and I think if that bone or whatever that's in their throat is part of the physiology, then sure, we are talking about a horror film here. But there's also, you know, cannibalism going on, there's... Um, just gore happening. So, you know, that can dip into it also, but you see that in other things, you know. I mean, maybe not cannibalism, but, um, you know, you could just not so easily dip this into, call, you know, calling this a horror, <laughs> a horror film. But uh, in the end, I thought it was pretty great. I really love the cast. It was stellar. I mean, Kurt Russell, Matthew Fox, uh, which is cool because I don't really see him in much, you know, since Lost or whatever. Um, Richard Jenkins, who I think was amazing. I mean, this might be one of my favorite times I've ever seen Richard Jenkins. I barely recognized him on screen and he was playing a great character, uh, had some great lines. I think he was fantastic. Um, Patrick Wilson, who is, you know, he's just always good. He's super reliable, I feel like. Um, uh, Hanzi, I can't, I can't remember his real name. Uh, I looked it up. I remember when I was watching Fargo, but I can't remember. Um, and then, you know, I don't know. It was just, it was a great cast. And I, I like the look of it. Um, I think it could have been shorter, you know. A lot of it was just people trudging through the, um, wilderness. They could have either cut some of that out trimmed it up a little bit or spiced it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? So, in the end, I'm going to say it was a good movie and it was a nice, you know, change of pace too because it was a western for the most part. I mean, you really don't get to those horror elements until the very end of the film. So, um, that's kind of what's fun about it too. If I didn't know it was a horror film, um, like... Had my friends not told me, I wouldn't be looking out for what happened at the end. So if you went into this movie blind, not knowing anything, you're just watching a, another version of The Searchers, right? Because we're so deep in um, Western tropes, you're not thinking about horror at all until near the end. Um, so that was, well, maybe at the beginning, because there was this moment where it's like, well, what am I looking at here? Is this a werewolf? What is this? But... Then you get so 
deep into Western tropes that you sort of forget about the opening scene, which had Sid Haig and David Arquette in it. Sid Haig, rest in peace. Um, and Sid Haig is like always in horror films, so I guess that could, you know, tell you something. You may know him from Devil's Rejects and uh, Thousand Corpses, uh, THX, um, Day of the Dead. I mean, he's he's in a lot everything. But, you know, you sort of forget about that, and then you get so deep into the westernness of the film that you forget about that part. Um, and don't question it, because you could, you know, you're not sure what you just saw. Did I just see a werewolf, or did I just see, was that a person? Could have just, it was probably just a person. You know, that's kind of what your mind does. Um, and then, again, at the end, that's when the horror comes in. So it's kind of interesting in that you can almost segment the film into this part is horror, uh, this part is Western, and okay, now we're back into horror again, you know, so that's kind of cool. Um, definitely better than Cowboys and Aliens, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, wow, I've talked for 10 minutes, so I think I'm going to go ahead and end this. If you've seen the film, let me know what you think. I'm curious to know, um, just because it's a, it's a unique movie, and I want to know what other people thought about it. So if you stumble on this video, let me know. Uh, also, this is a first time watch, so um, we have never had this in our advent calendar in the past. So we only have one picture, one family photo, and I will put that in at the end of this video. So uh, perhaps I'll see you tomorrow for more Peer Hangout, but do stay tuned for that picture that I'll be showing right now.